Hi everyone, Rebecca the Frugal Resinista here. So over on my Patreon page, I did a poll asking what kind of video you guys would like to see next from the suggestions that people have given me. And a lot of people have asked about how to finish the back of your art and how to hang it. So this is not gonna be a painting video, this is gonna be a tutorial on how to finish your art in the back so that it looks nice and how to get it hung on the wall correctly, even if it weighs a lot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is talk you through if you've poured onto a canvas. I was cleaning the rest of this off and I thought, well, maybe I should show you guys this too. So I had painter's tape around this edge and I peeled it and you can see in some spots, I still have a lot of my drips left over. So you can do a couple things just to clean those off before you get ready to mount and hang these. You can either just grab underneath the drips and, oh, I did that one too fast and push back toward the rest of your resin so that it'll bend. And I don't know if you can see this, but you just bend it that way and they pop right off. And if you get to a spot that isn't going to do that, that's just on way too tight, like over here maybe, I've got the resin kind of faded out into the tape a little bit. And I'm not sure it'll pop off that easily. You just take your blowtorch and you Heat it a tiny bit, just being sure not to get it too close. You don't want to burn your canvas and you don't want to melt your resin, but just give it an extra little bit of heat. And then you should be able to either peel it or scrape it off really easily with a razor blade. So I'm just going to get it a little loose there and slide my razor blade under the tape and the drips. And now this is really, really easy to just peel off. Okay. So I'm going to finish this part, see how I just pull it up and then fold it over and the tape lets go. Okay, I'm going to finish this part off camera so you guys don't have to watch it. And then I will show you how we add our hanging wire to the back of this. All right, you guys, some of you may have remember this picture from a video I did quite a few back if you have watched some of my channel, but I never did put wire on the back of this one. I haven't sold it because I like it. <laughs> I'm still debating on whether to sell it or not. So I figured I would just do the next part of it. The one thing you need to make sure you do, because I've done this one time, is check before you flip this over to do the back that you have it right side up. And I have one little signature. My signature is right there. So this is right side up. So I'm going to flip it like this. And what we're going to do is use a couple of products. And I will link you to all these in the description. I'm going to be using some picture wire. And these are rated to different pounds and this is a 30 pound wire so anything under 30 pounds I can use this to wire it together okay and I've already cut a piece from my last package and then the other thing I'm using is some small screw eyes and those are going to go on either side here and then the wire is going to attach them together you don't have to do a wire with canvas you could just do a screw and then hang the frame right on it but the thing with that is that if you do a geode or something that's got more glass on one side than the other and it's not even it's very hard to get your picture to hang without it being crooked so this wire makes it very easy for that to happen and if you ever hang your picture in a gallery or anything like that they require you to have these wires to hang where they want to hang things so i'm going to use my drill today and what i'm going to do is find my drill bit that is the same size as my screw eye here and you can read on the package it'll tell you how thick they are this is a 5 16 and so you find your 5 16 bit and then what i'm going to do is just drill two holes into the side of my frame not on the back because you don't want it to stick out past the back of the picture you want it to stay flush with the wall so i'm going to go right in here on either side now i try to get these pretty even but they don't have to be perfect because again the wire lets you adjust things so i'm going to drill some holes and then i'm going to screw the little screw eyes in and then i will show you how to attach the wire when you do these holes. I'm going to flip it back to the way it was just so it's easier to get here. Okay, when you do these holes, you want to go no less than a quarter of the way down. The reason being that you don't want your 
wire to go completely straight. You want it to have a little slack in it, but not enough that it can hit this part of your frame. So the next thing that's really important about the wire itself is that when you put it on, you want it to be able to hold the weight. This is not heavy, but if it was a really heavy one, I would want to make sure that it was still going to hold the weight and that the wire knot that I tied wouldn't slip out. So I'm going to tie just a little half knot first. I don't know how well you can see it, but I just tied a little half knot like the first part of tying your shoe. And then um, from there, I am also going to take the little piece that's left over and wrap it around the long piece. Now one thing with this is if you just grab the two and twist them together, it doesn't hold as well. You actually want to hold the long piece tight and then wrap the short piece around it very tightly, almost so it looks like a spring coiled up. So I'm going to do that and then I will show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, I just used a pair of wire cutters to cut the leftover wire that was in there. I will link you to those as well. And one thing I did that you probably noticed, I kept testing right here to make sure that my wire was short enough not to touch the top. This is all you have to do to get your pictures ready to hang. Peel off the tape using the blowtorch and then start your wire. So that is the first one. I'm going to move on to how to do this if you are working on a wooden frame. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is how to prep a piece that you've done on wood for it to be hanging. Now, I didn't have one of these right now that needed to be done, so I took down one of the ones that you guys have already seen me do again, and I am going to just show you how I already did it. But when you are hanging like this, you really want to make sure that the holes that you measure are even, because if they're not even on the back of this, no matter what you do, you're not going to get it hung evenly on the wall, even if you use your level and everything. So all I did was I decided how far in I wanted these. And I wanted, I wanted it to be two inches in. So I made the end of my yardstick even with the wood and drew a line across. And then I also wanted it to be a couple inches down. And so crossing over the other line, I measured two inches going the other way and drew that line across. I hope that makes sense because I'm not actually doing it. And then what I did was I took my largest drill bit and I used it to make two holes so that when I go to hang it, it'll hold, it'll be held up with two screws. That is because this piece, I weighed it, it weighs 10.3 pounds. And so it's absolutely fine and easy to hang these. You just have to use the right equipment so that they don't fall. So I'll show you how I did this. I took my largest drill bit to do the holes so that any screw that I put into the wall will be small enough to fit into them. Now you don't want to just go for it. You have to mark to make sure that you don't go too far. This is a one inch thick piece of MDF board and then it has a little bit of resin on top. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually take my drill and hold it right over where the hole is going to be and see how far it goes in. And then pull it back just like about a quarter of an inch because I don't want it to go all the way through. And then I'm gonna take my tape and mark where the edge of that drill touches where the wood starts so that when I actually drill into this, I stop when my tape gets to the wood. And that way you know you won't go too far in, okay? And I've already done that here. Now the one other thing you can do is you have to do it very slightly go in in a very slightly upward angle so that when you put this over the screws, it just helps even more to have those screws really catch your wood so that it won't fall. But this holds very sturdy. So I did two holes, drilled in until I got to the tape and you can see how the tape just touches the wood and I stopped there so that they wouldn't go too far through. Both of those are like that. So that is how I prepped the back of wood or MDF board. One other note real quick here, since you're seeing the back of this, I did not prime this because it was hanging in my house, but if I was to give this to anyone else, I would make sure that I prime the back of my piece and the front, and I would drill the holes first and then put primer into them as well. 
because you don't know if your piece is going to end up going somewhere with a lot higher humidity than where you're at and you don't want your wood to warp. So always prep the back if you don't know where it's going. The final back that I'd like to show you how to prep is if you have done a free form or some other type of resin project where the back is resin itself and is not wood or anything else. So what I use are these little sawtooth hangers and I will link you to them. And they come in different sizes depending on how big you've made your piece you can choose but they're just these little metal pieces that attach to the back of your project. You can get them wider and that's a good idea if you're doing larger geodes because if you want these to hang evenly with their weight distribution this gives you the option if you've got a long one to move your nail to any of the different slots so that your picture hangs evenly. These come with tiny little nails but in the case of doing freeform resin geodes, they're still too big and nails don't hold in. I don't know if you can see how big that is, but um, if, if I put this through, it's gonna break right through the front of my piece. So I'm not gonna do this right now, but the way I attach these is to sand the area just very lightly, and you can even use just a piece of hand sandpaper to get the surface so that your next coat of resin will stick to it. And I pour resin in that spot and push this right into it, making sure that the resin comes up through the little nail holes and covers these edges just a tiny bit. That way, if you've sanded, the whole thing becomes a permanent part of your art and it's not gonna go anywhere. One other thing you can do is if you want to add stability and make sure that your piece is strong enough, I've already got three coats in this so I'm not worried about it, but you can go ahead and do the whole back with a clear coat of resin and that would involve just propping the whole thing up onto something and pouring your clear coat all over and then sticking that in to make sure that it gets in there really well. So that's how I prep the back of Freeforms if I'm going to hang them. Just to finish off part one of this video really quickly, you know that I like to be frugal with everything I do. And if you've been onto my Patreon page, you'll see that I do a lot of thrift shopping for some of my products. So just as an example, I found this picture the other day at the thrift shop for $3.50. And I like these because this is a nice quality wood. And what I will do is tape my tape around here and pour a geode over the top after I've sanded and primed a little. But if all of this seems intimidating to you, check it out. This already has the hole for you, which is awesome. And if you find one like this, it's especially nice because this piece, if you can see, it's got this little dowel. This dowel can be used to stick in the bottom hole down here so that this can sit up propped on a table. And also, if you can find a slit like this, this is perfect. Your screw goes in here and then you slide your painting onto the screw so that it can't fall off. But also this again, if on the front you have any stones or anything that make the weight distribution uneven, you can slide it back and forth to where you need the screw to sit so that it's even. So that is how you prep the back of all of these. And now I'm gonna move on to show you how I drill holes into the wall and add screws that are strong enough to hold the paintings up. To hang my paintings, especially the heavy ones, I always use screws with anchors. And if you haven't seen one of these before, I'll show you what this is. You drill a hole into the wall first and pound this plastic part in with a nail. And then you use your screwdriver to screw into the wall. And what ends up happening is that as you screw this into the wall, the plastic part will split apart. I'm not sure I can do it with my hand because it holds really tight. Let's see if I can just show you. So the plastic part here, as you screw the screw into it, splits and pushes itself way out like that. And it grips the back of the drywall so that nothing can slip back through the hole that you created. So that is what I use. And you can, again, just like your wire, for hanging paintings, you get these rated for the pounds. So one of these screws with the anchor will hold 10 pounds. And what I like to do with anything that's wood that's really heavy, I definitely still wanna use two of these because I just feel like it's safer and you can hang it level better. And um, the painting I just showed you, for example, on the wood, I think I mentioned it, is 10 pounds. So I wanna make sure that I go a little over that. So I'm gonna use two 10 pound screws and I will show you how I actually put them into the wall. Okay, back to my large piece of wood. I think one of the most intimidating things for people is trying to 
figure out how far apart to put their two screws and how to get them level on the wall. So I'm going to show you the easy trick I use to do that. And it just involves painter's tape. So I'm going to get a piece of painter's tape that's a little wider than where my holes are. And I'm just going to stick it down like this. And I try to get it as even as possible from the top, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then what I do, once it's stuck on, I feel for the hole that I made, which is right here. And I just pop a hole in the center of it with my pen. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side and pop a hole in the center with my pen. Then, instead of trying to lift this whole thing up and see what's even, I'm going to peel this off of here and I'm going to stick it onto the wall and then drill my two holes into the tape and then pull the tape off. And I already know that the screws will be the right distance apart. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is hang my tape level so that I know how far apart to put my screws. So the first thing I'm going to do is eyeball it and get just a general idea of what I think looks level. And then I'm going to choose one of the screws and make that the point that is going to stay where it is and grab my level. So I'm going to measure off of this little hole right here. I hope you guys can see. I'm going to measure off of this hole here and then make this level. I was pretty close, but not quite there. And I'm just going to there. Now what I'm going to do is draw a tiny line on my tape all the way across here. That way I can see how far off my hole was. Oh my word, it's almost perfect. And the hole that I made right here, I'm just going to draw on that line. I was maybe Oh my gosh, like two millimeters off. But now I know exactly where to drill my two holes. I hope you guys can see that. So once again, there's the first side. See that little hole right there? So I measured from that one to the other side and the actual other hole is right just above that dot. I don't know if you can see where I punctured the tape. So I drew a line across with the level and then right underneath where that hole was made a dot. And so now these two will be level and I'm going to drill the holes and show you how I do that part. All right, so here is what you are technically supposed to do with these anchor screws. You are supposed to use your drill. I haven't switched from when I showed you how to drill the holes into the back of your wood, but you're supposed to pre-drill a hole into the drywall and then use a hammer and tap in the plastic anchor screw and then use your screwdriver to screw it into the anchor. Now, that's not what I do. And I don't do it right, but it seems to work. So I'm just going to show you my little trick. I always worry that I'm going to get the size wrong on these because if I drill a hole that's a little bit too big, this whole thing won't work and it'll fall out and then it's ruined. And this probably seems like even less of a good idea. <laughs> but here's what I do. If you pound your screw into the hole like a nail, let's get it started. It makes a slightly bigger hole than you would want if it was just the screw, but it makes the right size hole to put your anchor in. So again, this is not how you're supposed to do it technically. Nobody yell at me, but this has worked all over my house. And down here, I'm not worried because I'm in my art space and I hang all my paintings all over the place. So if I messed up, no big deal, but this won't mess up because this is how I always do it. All right, so again, that's not good if you want to screw it in. So if you're just putting a screw into the wall, don't ever do that. But it's now just slightly bigger than my screw, so it's the right size for the anchor. And you want to tap these in lightly because they are plastic, and if you hit them really hard, they will bend, and then they won't work anymore. You can't really unbend them and still get them to go in. So I'm going to lightly tap, and then I'm going to screw the screw in, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. All right, my anchored screws are in. I always give them a little tug just to make sure I'm pushing down actually really hard and they are in place. So I'm gonna peel the tape off. And now I'm going to hang my piece. I already know that the screws are the right distance apart. One thing you have to make absolutely sure that you do, if you don't have painter's tape, you can use like a different kind of, 
scotch tape or masking tape. Scotch tape's not really great because it doesn't stick well, but make sure you do not use any kind of tape that stretches, like a duct tape or anything like that, because besides it peeling your paint, if it, when you peel it off the back of whatever piece you had put the holes in, it will automatically stretch, even if you don't think you stretch it too much, and then your holes won't be in the right spot. The trickiest part of these is to <laughs> line up your holes without scratching your wall up. So I'm gonna do my best to kind of look and find one hole. If you get one hole in, the other one's easy to get. There we go. Whoop, hang on. One. There. And that's it. It's in place, super simple, and I didn't have to worry too much with my level and measuring and measuring the distance between and everything. It was already done. So I hope that really helps you guys. That whole thing with the tape just makes it so much easier. Now let me just really quickly show you too, when you're hanging the other type where you've done a canvas and a wire, I'll show you how this works. You get the wire over your screw and I use the same type of anchor screw and see how I just stuck it on there and so it's real crooked. Because you have that wire, it's easy to slide it until you get it to exactly where you want it. So that's how you hang those. If I was doing my free form, again, it has those little teeth. I would put it there and if it goes unevenly, I just move to a different tooth until the whole thing stayed level. So I hope that really helps you guys. I know that it can be kind of tricky, but it's really not bad after you do it a couple times. So I encourage you to try it and don't get discouraged by the backs of your pieces because I know it's an intimidating thing to try to get those clean. But if you use your tape and then you use your blowtorch, you can get these pretty clean on the back and have them hang very nice and flush. Thank you guys as always for watching. I appreciate it so much. Find me on Facebook and Instagram as the Frugal Resinista and check out my Patreon page for some more fun videos that are for subscribers. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Happy painting. Have a good day.